Hi guys, it's Daniel here, and today we're going to make a quick video on how to prove Legendre's formula, which is the following. Vp of n factorial is equal to the sum from i equals 1 to infinity of the floor of n over p to the power of i, which is also equivalent to n minus s p of n over p minus 1. And for those of you who don't know, Vp of a number x is equal to the number of times that a prime, or it doesn't have to be prime, but p divides into x. And while sp of n is if you write n in uh, base p, the sum of the digits of this base p in number. So let's first start by proving the first uh, equation. vp of n factorial is equal to that sum. So to do this, let's analyze n factorial. We know that it's just equal to n times n minus 1 times n minus 2 times all the way to 2 times 1, right? So let's first see how many of these have one divisor of p. Well, it's simple. That's just the floor of n over p. And this is pretty intuitive because, like, on average, you have out of all numbers n, about 1 over p of them are divisible by p. And you just take the floor to make it an integer. But you can check rigorously that this is indeed correct. So n over p numbers are 0 mod p, or divisible by p. Now, let's check how many of those numbers are divisible by p squared. Well, by a similar reason, we have that n over p squared numbers are divisible by p squared, 0 mod p squared. And we continue this idea to get that for all positive integer k, we have that there are the floor of n over pk numbers that are divisible by p to the power of k. So, oops, p to the power of k. So we continue this on uh, to infinity, and we finally get the total number of times that n factorial can be divisible by p. So what should we do here? Well, first we count the number of numbers that are divisible by p. So that's m. Uh, floor of n over p, and now we divide each of these numbers by p. Now the remaining numbers, some of them are still divisible by p. So to find the number of numbers that are divisible by p again, or in other words p squared, we add the floor of n over p squared in order to uh, count those numbers. Because we only counted the their factor of p once when they have two factors of p, so we add this n floor of n over p squared. And continuing on like this, we see that for each progressive power of p, we have to add on that extra to make sure that the p, that factor of p in that number is also counted. So in the end, we just obtain that vp of n factorial is equal to the sum from i equals 1 to infinity of the floor of n over p to the power of i. And we're done with the first equation. Now for the second equation. All right, so for the second part, now we need to prove that the summation from i equals 1 to infinity of the floor of n over p to the power of i is equal to n minus sp of n over p minus 1, where sp of n is just the sum of the digits of n in base p. So in order to work with this sp of n, let's just represent n in its base p format, which is just n, to power of n sub x times p to the power of x plus da, 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 plus n sub 1 times p plus n sub 0. So now let's analyze what happens when we look at one of the terms of here, n over p to the power of i. Well, this thing just equals the floor of n x p x minus i plus da 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 plus n i plus da 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 plus n oops n and one p to the one minus i plus n zero p to the negative i. And we notice that for all these terms, they're less than one, and in fact, their sum is less than one. You can just prove this using the geometric summation formula. But anyways, they get completely obliterated in uh, the floor, which so this just results into n sub x 
times p to the power of x minus i plus all the way to n sub i. And now let's take this over the sum of all uh, the sum of all these terms, the floor of n over p to the power of i. So if you do this, we basically find that for each n sub x, we have the terms p to the x minus 1, or I'll call this k, p to the k minus 1 plus p to the k minus 2 plus all the way to plus p plus 1 from the summation. And this is just equal to n sub k times p to the k minus 1 over p minus 1, right? Which is just equal to n k p k minus n k over p minus 1. And I take the sum of this. These this, the sum of this, is equivalent with this thing. Uh, it's, it's, a little, it's a little tedious to check this, and you have to do some algebra, but I'll just skip that part. I'll leave it to you as an exercise. But anyways, these two are equal. So now we know that this thing is equal to this thing. But what does this thing equal? Well, this thing is just equal to 1 over p minus 1 times the sum of n k p k minus the sum of n sub k. And uh, what does this equal? This, this just equals n. And this, this equals s sub p of n. So this is equal to n minus s sub p of n over p minus 1. And we are done. Hi guys, it's Daniel here, and today we're going to solve a classic number theory problem. So let's take a look. Show that for any n and any a,